Hello everyone, hope you're all doing fine. It's really a crazy time right now with this coronavirus, but I really, really hope that you're all doing well. Now, the video that you're about to see is actually a part of my beginner woodworkers course. And in this part, I talk about my top five tips that I have incorporated to get my woodworking joinery tighter. In addition, at the end of the video, I incorporate those five tips and show you how I make a half lap joint. So if you want to learn more tips like this, I have some more YouTube videos similar to this one. And you can also read more about my woodworking course at my website, rbologni.com. And you can also buy my beginner woodworkers course there. I have put a link in the description below. So I hope you'll find this video helpful and let's get started. So the first tip that I got for you is square your lumber. This is very important. If you want a good result, having a square number is crucial. It's gonna make it a lot easier when marking and also when cutting afterwards. So I am lucky enough to have a jointer planer combo. Before I start planing, I always make sure that my fence is square and straight. So once I make sure that my fence is square, I stop planing and I don't take away a lot of wood at one pass. Take away just a little by little each time and constantly check if the wood is square on all sides. If you don't have a planer or jointer, I recommend talking to the guys at your local lumber store or lumber yard. Very often they are very willing to help you get your lumber square and straight when you're buying from them. And if that doesn't work out, it's time to hand plane. Now squaring a lumber by using a hand plane is very hard and it takes a lot of time. I don't have the expertise to talk about this, so I recommend going to YouTube and search for videos how to square lumber by using hand planes correctly. So the second tip that I got for you is take your time marking your joint correctly. I know from experience that actually cutting the joint is a lot more fun than marking the joint. But you will get a lot better results if you take your time to mark it properly. Make sure there is no doubt what wood is going to be cut away and what wood is gonna be left behind or not cut away. Double check that you have marked and measured it correctly. Make sure you have an understanding of how the joint is gonna to come together. If you have several joints that are gonna to come together to let's say a bookshelf, make sure you also put numbers on the pieces that you know which ones are gonna to fit together. There is nothing that is more annoying than finishing a beautiful dovetail joint than realizing that you put it the wrong way. So make sure to take your time and mark it correctly. So tip number three is to use marking knife and or marking gauge as you're marking your joints. So if all you have is a pencil to mark your joints, that is perfectly fine. Make sure that it's nice and sharp. But if you want to get the joints just a little bit tighter and a bit more sharp, I recommend purchasing a marking knife and a marking gauge. So, the marking knife. There are two reasons why you should have a marking knife. Number one is that it leaves a sharper, finer line than what a pencil will do. So a pencil, if you have a really sharp pencil, it's gonna leave a very nice line, but marking knife is just a tiny bit sharper. The second reason, and probably the most important reason, is that a marking knife will cut the wood fibers. So if you only use a pencil, make a mark, then start chopping on it with a chisel, I mean, it's not gonna leave a very good result. You're gonna have some tear out, 
and you're just gonna be just a bulky, not sharp edge. But if you use a marking knife, you actually cut the wood fibers. And then if you use a saw or a chisel and sneak up on that line, you're gonna have a lot finer edge, a lot more sharper edge. So that is why you should buy a marking knife. And the marking gauge is really pretty much the same reasons. It's gonna leave sharper line and it's also gonna be perfectly parallel to the edge. And just as with the marking knife, the marking gauge will also cut the wood fibers and leave a finer edge. Tip number four, reference of the piece, not a measurement. So I'm gonna explain. Let's say you want to make a half lap joint, which is what I'm gonna show you afterwards. Instead of measuring the width of the one board and then transfer it to the other board, put the piece on top, square it up, make sure it's located where it should be. Then you make a mark referenced straight off the piece and not a measurement. So the last tip that I got for you is make it too tight. So the first time you make the joint, whether you use a hand saw, table saw, maybe a router or just a chisel, make the joint too big or too tight and then sneak up on a perfect fit using chisel or hand plane or maybe even a saw. Take away just a little bit of wood at the time and check if it fits. If it doesn't fit, take away a little bit more. Repeat that until you have a perfect fit. So make the joints too tight and sneak up on a perfect fit. Okay, now let us put these five tips into action as we go through in details how to make a half lap joint. So just to give you an idea of what we are going to make here, this is a half lap joint and it goes together like this. So now we have two pieces that are square, they have the same width and the same length. And it's time to move on to tip number two, which is to take time and mark it correctly. So the first thing that we are going to do is to place this top piece in the center of this bottom piece. So as I said, if you can reference off the piece and not off a measurement or ruler, do that. But in this case, we don't have a reference as to where the center of this piece is. So I'm gonna place this on the top and just aim approximately in the center. And I'm gonna use a ruler. I'm gonna measure the distance to this edge. So right now this is 13.6 centimeters and on this side it's 14.6. So I'm going to move it over this side. It's 14.3. This is 14.1. 14.2. Centimeters on each side and the piece is centered Now I don't know if this one is square So I'm gonna check it using a square Make sure that it's nice and square Then measure again to see if I'm off and I am not still 14.2 
there it's perfectly centered. Now I'm going to use a marking knife to mark both sides. Make sure you don't move this top piece. If you like to use a clamp, that's fine. I'm just going to put some pressure down the middle here. So now we have these two marks. They are perfectly centered. And this is the part that is going to be removed. And now the next step would be to transfer these marks over to the sides here. I'm going to use a square. And the first time you do this, you want to use a pencil. Make sure you go at least past the middle of this piece. And then it's time to figure out how deep we're going to cut this joint. So typically for a half lap joint, you'd like to be pretty much centered on the piece. So we're going to use a ruler to measure how thick this is. This is 3.1, which means 1.1. Five and a half should be the center. So I'm gonna use my marking gauge, loosen it just a bit so that it's adjustable, and I'm gonna measure to 1.5 and a half. Doesn't have to be. 100% accurate and I'm gonna explain why in just a second. So the next thing we want to do is use the marking gauge to make a mark across here. So I'm making sure that I'm referencing off this top side, not the bottom side. I'm gonna go like this. Make the light pass and go a bit deeper and a bit deeper again. So now I'm going to do the same on the other side, making sure I reference off the same side here. Now I can turn those pencil marks into marking knife marks. And this is the part that is going to be removed on this side, same on the other side. So now it's time to remove this part. Also make sure that you don't adjust the marking gauge. You want it to stay exactly the way it is. Now there are a couple of ways that you can cut this. And afterwards I'm going to show you how you can do it with a handsaw. But first I'm going to show you the way that I like to do it, which is with a table saw and a sled. So the first step is to set the blade height. So again, I'm going to use a ruler and we remember that is that the depth that we need is 1.5 and a half. So I'm going to make it 1.5. Then I'm going to make a cut and then sneak up on the line to get the perfect blade height. So if you look here, you can see that I actually cannot go any higher. This blade height is perfect.
here we have a perfect fit. So now I like to clean up this bottom here, getting rid of all the saw marks and making sure that I got a nice flat and square bottom. So I'm gonna use a chisel. The first thing to do is to establish the edge. So I'm gonna use the marking knife mark Put my chisel into the mark. And chisel my way down. So I'm going to stop right there. I'm about halfway through. The reason is if you go all the way through, you're very likely to tear it out on the other side and you don't want that. So I'm going to flip it around and then I'm going to do the same on this side. So now that I've done that, Flip this over on this side, bring it to the edge so that I can check if it's square. This is nice and square, so I'm just gonna clean it up a bit to make sure that it looks decent. Okay, so now this part is done, then we're moving on to cutting out the joint on this side to finish off this joint. So we repeat the process to find center. So of course it should be the same, 14.2. I'm gonna slide this over. There is 14.2, should be the same, but I'm just gonna double check, 14.2. Okay, so now this is perfectly centered. Then it's time to make some marks with the marking knife. So I'm gonna make some marks just to be sure. When we set the marking gauge, we referenced off this part, this top. So that means we're gonna to have to reference off the same side here. Again, this is the top. This is where we referenced. This is where we're gonna reference with the marking gauge this time. I'm just gonna Make an X here, so that we know that this is the side to reference off. This is very important. Then using the marking gauge, the same distance as we used on this one, we're going to reference off the X, the mark side, then make the mark. Light pass, then a bit heavier, then a bit heavier. Make sure we use the same side again. So the reason why it's important to keep track on what side you reference from is because even if it's not perfectly centered, if you reference off the same side, it's going to fit anyway. The reason is, the same amount of wood that we removed from this piece, the exact same amount is going to be left on this piece. That is how you'll get a perfectly flush.
joints. So now I'm going to show you how to cut this with a handsaw. So the same rules apply here. You don't want to start off by cutting at the line. Start just beside it and then sneak up on the line with a chisel afterwards. So start off your cut slowly. Making sure you don't go across the line. Then you watch the line going downwards to make sure that you are square. Then, as you are approaching your bottom line, you want to take things slow. Make sure you don't cross it. Then you repeat on the other side. So once you have cut the edges, make some relief cuts in between. They don't have to be square, but make sure you get the right depth on both sides here. So now I can start chopping away this wood using a chisel and a mallet. And once again, I'm not going to go to the line right at once. I'm just going to start removing some wood and sneak up on the line afterwards. Now we are really close to a nice fit. It's just a bit tight yet, so instead of using a chisel, I'm going to use a file. So to recap, number one, square your lumber. Number two, take your time marking it correctly. Number three, use a marking knife and or marking gauge. Number four, reference of the piece, not a measurement if you can. Number five, make the joint too tight and sneak up to a perfect fit. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you enjoy it, please hit thumbs up. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. If you are new to my channel, go check out some of my other videos and remember to hit subscribe 
and also that little bell next to the subscribe button. That way you will be notified the next time I upload a new video. If you want to buy some woodworking merchandise, my woodworking plans or my beginner woodworkers course, or you want to see my recommended woodworking books and tools, you can go to my website aurebaloney.com. I put a link in the description below. Thanks again for watching this. Take care and I will see you all in the next video. Bye bye.